Uh, welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to Happy New Year to everyone. And uh, this is our first uh, 2021's uh, Fiverr Talk webinar initiative. And uh, today our uh, webinar will be on smart cabling, make, making access to Fiverr easy. So our uh, today's speaker is uh, Colin, Colin K. Pat Patrick. Uh, he's the solutions director of MTEL, and he has worked for MTEL for over 28 years now. Having begun his MTEL career in 1992, Colin has uh, since held noteworthy positions within the company due to his wealth of knowledge and technical expertise, experience in the blown fiber and fiber to the X industry, his current position as solutions director within MTEL senior management team oversees uh, the development of new innovative solutions from concept through the uh, through to design, manufacturing, testing, then ultimately to the market. So I will now uh, hand over to him. But before that, uh, our uh, webinar will maybe take about 40 to 45 minutes in total. And in the uh, finishing line, we will have a Q&A session uh, based on the questions we get. Uh, so this this is our uh, program flow for today. So I will now hand over to uh, Colin. Please welcome Colin Kirkpatrick. Good afternoon, everybody, and happy New Year to you. So we're going to talk about some uh, smart cabling and uh, how to make access to fibre easy. Okay, so what, what makes a, a fiber cable system smart? Um, future cabling systems need to be designed with converged networks in mind. A single system that can provide connectivity to various subsystems, 5G sensing, internet of things, long haul, metro, ethernet, and of course, fiber to the home and, uh, and smart cities. Um, systems need to be flexible to adapt to increased demand and changing technologies. Over the last 20 years, uh, all the, the efforts have been put into fibre to the business and fibre to the home. In the future, there's going to be a lot more demand for fibre for the new technologies, uh, even autonomous uh, vehicles. So there's a lot of fibre to go in the ground and to save digging repeatedly, um, it's best to try and put as much in the ground as possible on day one. So the system also needs to be reliable and easy to access fiber at any point in the network. Uh, so it needs to be future-proofed. Um, it needs to be intuitive, uh, a plug and play system. The fiber has got to be as easy as possible to get access to um, for the ever smart cabling systems that are going to arrive. Okay, so future-proofing networks. Um, one idea is to change over to blowing cable into infrastructure instead of pooling in cables. With uh, blown mini cables, you can get up to a 4V2 or even higher fibre count ribbon cables are becoming available now that can be blown. Um, longer distances can be achieved and there can be a lot more bends that you get in more in the, the city areas. But blown mini cable is faster, it goes around more bends and you get longer installation distances. Generally, you can get two to 3,000 meter installation distances if you choose the, the right cable size and the right subduct size. If you use water for blowing instead of air, then you can achieve 4,000 meter uh, installation distances uh, on the long haul networks. So the blown fiber systems are available. They can be buried in the ground. They can be installed into ducted systems. You get aerial variants of it, and you get indoor duct systems. Um, so the whole system can be seamless from getting from one splice point to the next splice point without having to put any splices in between, which makes it a lot easier for the installation. So you can speed up installation time. Blowing cables can be average 60 meters per minute. 
Some people can stall at 90 or 100 meters a minute. Uh, generally, it, it's a safer install if you go at 60. It's a, a nice speed to achieve. Um, with Microdux, it's scalable. Um, you can change the cable capacity or the fiber, fiber type in the future. If you think over the last 20 years, we've had G652B fibers, then we had G652D, then we've had G657A1, and now there's A2. Fibers are all uh, are changing uh, over the years. And with blown fiber, at least you have that ability to change to the new fiber types if you need in the future. Also, um, dig once, install once, uh, an end-to-end -end duct system. Digging takes a lot of time. I'll cover that more in the, the covering slides, but it's good to, to future-proof uh, the, the network uh, for the coming years. Okay, benefits of the, the blown cable system. Um, it gives network longevity. Um, every fiber network has a value. If you bury a cable in the ground, um, it's not that easy to repair. It's not easy to um, to upgrade. So it, it's got a value. If you put a cable into a duct, you actually have two assets. You've got the asset of the cable and the asset of the duct as well. Th that duct asset is, is of great value because you can change the cable. It's all about flexibility in the future and also repair. Um, at the moment, you know, fiber is the, the main product that goes into the ground. Um, in future, there may be more gas networks, more fiber net, uh, gas networks, sewer networks, water networks. They'll be being installed and they go below the fiber cable. So if, if uh, future installations happen and they cut into the fiber cable, it's going to cost a lot to repair. So it's best to have something that's flexible so you can repair it quickly. As I mentioned before, long distances, uh, installing up to 2,000 meters or three or four using uh, different technologies for blowing. It's all the same blowing equipment. It's just using different pressures and deciding whether to use air or water when you're installing the cable. Air works well going over hills. Water is good for uh, flat installations. So it saves space and cost as well. Blown fiber is on average 60% smaller and lighter than the conventional conventional duct and direct buddy cables. So it saves on logist logistics and storage as well. And you can plan and install high quality spare duct capacity for the future. Okay, this is just a slide I put together to show that communications is evolving. Um, the first copper lines were installed in 1876 and we have never stopped digging since. Um, so we've been digging trenches for 144 years. Um, the technology, thankfully, has changed. Um, now you get diggers, you get trenchers, you get moles, a lot of new machinery there to, to make it easier. But we still dig. We're still adding more ducts, more cables all of the time. It would be good to just dig once. That's uh, part of the, the presentation here. So we, we've installed a lot from copper phone lines to coax to fiber to the cabinet to fiber to the home. The future, we've still got 5G, smart cities, internet of things, artificial intelligence, and fiber backbones. There's a, a new um, name coming up just now, which is uh, smart rural. So they want to have smart abilities in rural areas as well. So this future build technology that's shown in the slide is going to expand over the years. It's like electricity. Electricity was brought into everybody's homes and not everybody knew exactly what they were going to do with it. But now we've got hundreds of technologies that run over electricity and the same will happen with fiber. So labor can be cheap in some countries, it can be expensive, but digging once must have a cost saving instead of having to dig repeated times in the future. So communications is seen as the, the fourth utility. Um, it's a utility like no other. Uh, when you do install gas, water, and electricity, it's installed and it, it's more like a, a fit and forget. You install it, you, you connect it to customers as and when uh, they require it, and then the maintenance is, is fairly low key. But with communications, um, 
there's always more and more being installed and I, I can't see that changing in the future there's always fiber optics and communications is always um, faster evolving there's always more and more to to be installed hence about um, the, the one dig philosophy of installing as much as you can okay so digging smart when the trench is open install extra capacity it's a fraction of the cost compared to opening the ground back up we we did a talk at the ftth europe um, in december and uh, if you look at some of the the additional costs by doubling your microduct network the cost can be as little as uh, as three percent of your network build by doubling your capacity for the future so it, it's not a huge cost by by adding some more um, capacity and so Key install fibers is another option as well. Um, fiber is low cost at the moment. Uh, I believe fiber pricing will always uh, or only go up from here. So why not install the fibers as well? Actually installing fibers into the microduct reduces the installation cost, which means that reduction can actually go against your additional cost for adding microducts. So adding extra microducts can actually neutralize by pre-installing some of your fibers. So if you believe um, that fiber demands shall increase in the coming years, why not invest now and uh, you'll reap the benefits in years to come. Um, all underground duct space is a, an asset and it has a, a value. So dig once, do it right uh, with one dig. Okay, I'm just going to cover some of the, the products that are being used in the FTTX networks. Uh, the first one is a retriever product here. Um, it's a, a duct which um, can be between eight millimeters and 15 millimeters in diameter. It's pre-installed with uh, multiple colored fibers. And these fibers, you can access them on every floor if you're doing it in a, a building or even in the ground. You, you cut, if you're a house number one, you cut the fiber at house number two and you retrieve it with your hands and then you redirect that fiber to um, a drop tube and then to each home. Retriever can be used uh, in ducted situations. It can be buried, installed in facade or used uh, in overhead networks as well. It's, uh, it's easy training. Um, same access and retrieval process is used no matter whether it's used indoors or above ground. Or, uh, or underground. So no fiber blowing, and it's a, a simple insulation technique. Very small as well. So Retriever, um, it's got GRP strength members in the wall of the product, which gives it its strength for, for pulling in or for installing on facades or overhead. So there's no movement of the product uh, over a, a temperature range and uh, over wind as well there's high winds so no blowing requirement um, you can have two to twelve fibers per tube so in each of the the colored fibers you see inside the, the tube in the drawing there that can have two fibers or it can have 12 fibers so you can have your um, access network your distribution network and your drop network all in one cable you just install one and obviously you can have lots of excess fiber to future proof yourself so you can access those fibers anywhere at any time to add uh, future technologies. So you can get fiber counts in these cables up to 415 fibers is the, the highest fiber count we have. The lowest one is um, 16 fibers. So there's a lot of flexibility there. To access the retriever, um, fairly simple. Um, you have a special tool that takes a cut out of the, the the tube. You use that piece that you cut out to actually access the fibers. And then you install a box, which is the EMU box, we call it. It's a MTEL multi-utility box. That's an IP68 rated box. It can have uh, four or eight drops coming out of that box. And it can be installed uh, by burial it can be installed on facades and it can be installed on poles for overhead networks as well. And we have an indoor rated version as well. 
So one box does everything across the whole network. This is just a schematic showing the, the fuller solution of the retriever. So that would come from a street cabinet. It would run past the homes. You would uh, branch off using the emu box um, to each home. You retrieve the fibre back and then you push the fibre to each home and splice it. And there's termination boxes that can be used for the side of the house or apartment or inside the house. Um, the, the whole solution is, is readily available. If required, the, the EMU boxes can actually be installed into small manholes to make it easier to access them in the future as well. There is a, a video showing the, the MTEL Retriever product on the MTEL uh, YouTube site. Okay, another product that is proving more and more flexible is the, the MultiFoo product. So this is a, a tube bundle, a standard bone fibre tube bundle, but the, the fibres within are pre-installed at the manufacturing phase. So when you receive the tube bundle, you've got 24 tubes there with different colours. You can access each micro duct and you can retrieve the fibre back pulling back distances of uh, 150 meters, and then you can push or pull or blow that drop fiber to each house. It's used uh, a lot in, in Europe um, because of its flexibility. It's, again, it's a future-proof product. You, you have a dedicated micro duct going to each house or each apartment block where you could blow that fiber back out in the future and uh, install a new fiber or install a, a higher fiber count if you want to, to upgrade. So it's a very simple way of breaking and branching uh, to access um, the micro duct, the fibre, and branch to the house. So the benefits of MultiFoo, um, it, it's got the dedicated micro duct from the cabinet to each house. Um, it allows for up to 24, uh, two to 12 fibre drops. You can have different fibre uh, counts within the, the tube bundle. So you can have some for homes, some for apartments, and some potentially for your main trunk route as well. And there's a large central tube within that tube bundle that can be used for fibre cable installation from 24 fibres up to 144. So it gives you a good amount of uh, flexibility to upgrade in the future. Okay. So these products can also be used in, inside existing HDP ducts. Um, there are a lot of uh, HDP ducts installed uh, around the world that have not been utilized yet. Now, you could look to just install uh, a fiber cable inside one of these ducts. Installing a fiber cable means you can only get access to the fiber at splice points um, that have been pre-planned in the network. These might be up to 2,000 meters apart. Or what you could do is you can install a new manhole or access chamber and put a splice closure in and put a loop joint in. With the blown fiber or the multi-foo or the retriever products, when you install these over a two kilometer length of network, you can access the micro ducts anywhere. You can open up the HDP duct, then open up the, the micro ducts or multi-foo or retriever and get access to the fibre almost immediately. There's no extra splice joints required. There's no extra manholes required. It gives you the utmost flexibility to access fibre anywhere in your network in the future. So there's lots of different um, variants or recipes of, of the, the pre-installed and the blown fibre networks. It really depends how many fibres you need and, uh, and how much future capacity you want. So, feel free to contact us to uh, let us advise you or discuss with you what fibre counts and tube counts you require. Okay. So connectorized fibres as well. Um, as fibre to the home is deployed more and more around the world, there is a, a shortage um, of, of people to do the installation um, that have the skill to do fibre blowing, splicing, 
and they've got to have a van to carry blowing equipment and splicing equipment around. So we've looked at this and we've come up with the two variants of a pre-connectorized product that can be used for FTTH. One of them is a quick link, which is a blown fiber system. The fiber comes on a small cardboard reel. It connects to a blowing machine. The average drop length from fiber to the home is about 125 meters. So you can blow this pre-connectorized fiber in to the microducts in a matter of two to three minutes. And then you just build up the connectors as shown at the bottom of the, the picture. You've got three components that you assemble around the, the LC ferrule. Uh, it takes less than 30 seconds to build up the connector. You clean the connector and the adapter and you plug the fiber in. Very simple, very quick. As well as that, we have a, a drop cable which is a, a hollow drop cable that we call Quick Connect. Inside the drop cable is a, a fiber, which is pre-connectorized at both ends with these small connectors, and they're within the cable. So you install a cable from the cabinet or the splice closure to each home, then you, you ring cut the, the cable and you get access to the ferrules, and then you plug the ferrules in at both ends, at the cabinet and the closure and at the house. Any excess fiber can be coiled within the, the customer termination unit. You can store up to 50 meters of fiber in some of these termination units. So it gets rid of any excess that you have. So very easy, it's just a, it's a, an outdoor patch cord that can be upgraded in the future as well. The Quick Connect products can be installed uh, in an open trench. They can be more plowed in, they can be installed overhead and uh, along facades. So it's a, it's a truly universal drop cable. Okay, this slide was just to show um, future cables are, are evolving. Um, we have our, um, our partner and, and uh, cable manufacturer, MCAB. So that's a, a joint venture with a company called INCAB and MCAB. So we make fiber cables in, the, in Perm, in Russia, um, in Germany, in the UK, in the USA. And we're, we're working to develop new fiber cables all of the time for new types of network build to make it easier for the installation. So we've got blown fiber bundles that are um, have the low friction jacket on the outside that blow these long distances. And that the fibers blow in at good speeds as well to make your uh, fiber connection for FTTH as quick as uh, it possibly can be. We've got ruggedized cables called Nordic Light that are used in um, the, the Nordics in, in Scandinavia or areas where you have extreme cold weather. These are, are slightly stronger cables that are made to survive the elements of cold weather. Many cables have uh, evolved hugely. Um, I think the, a 96 fiber mini cable used to be around uh, 12 millimeters uh, 15 years ago or 20 years ago. Now a 96 fiber cable is around six to 6.4 millimeters in diameter. So fiber cables are getting smaller and smaller as, as time goes on. There's developments in the aerial ADSS cables that I'll cover in a, another slide, um, but even these are, are getting smaller, easier to access, easier to install than conventional cables as well. Conventional and direct buddy cables are getting smaller, stronger, easier to deploy. Just to show some of the, the mini cable um, technology there, um, I'll not go through all the sizes, but there's a, a 288 fiber cable that is, that is manufactured by MCAB, which is, it used to be nine millimeter with the 250 micron fiber. Now it's down to 7.9 millimeters in diameter. This cable can blow 2,000 meters into uh, a 16 millimeter microduct in, in round about 30 minutes. But it also blows into a, a 14 mil OD, 10 mil ID microduct, 2,000 meters in around 30, meter, uh, 30 minutes. So it's an extremely good performing cable, reliably installs these long distances um, at great speed. Again, there's a YouTube video showing the, the installation um, of that cable. Okay, just to cover the, the microducts, um, 
micro ducks were invented or, or started to get used in, in large scale in 1993. Uh, MTL were one of the first manufacturers of micro ducks during that time. Since then, there's been a, a rapid and, and, and a large change of, of micro duct designs depending where they are used. In Australia, um, they require nylon because they, they have issues with termites. And uh, we, we have a, an HDPE sheath that can be added. We, we can add steel tape for USA, where we've been asked to make products that are uh, gopher proof. Um, we make products for destroyer ships to, to bring the communications together within ships. Um, we, we make products that are overhead designed for use to, uh, in Scandinavia. There's a huge range of products, micro duct sizes, um, that, that are being designed on a daily basis. After 18 years, 19 years of making micro ducts, you would think that you'd come to an end uh, of new designs. Surely at some point, enough is enough and you've designed everything. But I guarantee you every day or every couple of days, we're doing new designs for customers. Um, we enjoy being flexible, making new products um, for new technologies. It's not just micro ducts that have to change. Splice enclosures change. The fiber counts, like I discussed, they've changed. So micro, micro ducts have to change along with uh, everything else. And generally, we are at the, the forefront of designing the micro ducts for the other components that are being designed. So we do um, flat products as well, the, the 1 to 26 micro ducts there. Um, there's a, a flat product that goes into micro trenches. We've got hybrids with large and small tubes. You can feed uh, a 192 fiber cable down the center. Then you've got drop cables, uh, drop tubes for drop cables on the outside. So that can be used for fiber to the home or fiber to the business or feeding antennas um, or CCTV, autonomous vehicles. Um, it, it, yeah, there's a, a lot of technology to come still in our industry. As well as the micro ducts and the cables, uh, obviously you need all the connectors as well. So uh, MTL are able to provide, and we've got great partners um, for supplying direct buried connectors that can withhold a 15 or 30 joule impact. We've got um, gas, water, and uh, retention seals to hold cables in place. We've got repair closures. So if somebody cuts into a micro duct by mistake and uh, there's a cable in there, you need to blow that cable out in the future so you can add this repair closure on that makes it fully sealed and tight, uh, airtight, so you can blow cables in and out in the future. Okay, narrow trenching. This is one of the, the new products from MTEL, which we called uh, WebFlex. It kind of looks like a, a Christmas tree that's multicolored, but it's, it's a webbed version of uh, Microdux that uh, has flexes on it. So when you install it into a micro trench, it actually holds itself in position within that micro trench. Um, what you'll find with uh, some HDP ducts when you install them into a micro trench is you'll pour in concrete or cement. And there's because they're hollow, there's a potential that they'll lift up and float to the top or float to close to the top, which means that it's not at the depth that um, it needs to be um, where other contractors and uh, utilities come and they might cut into that duct. So it's important to make sure that your duct goes right to the bottom of the trench and is installed at the, the right depth. With this webbed micro duct solution as well, the WebFlex, you don't need uh, connectors to branch off to the homes. It's like a, each micro duct is on like a, a zipper. So you can just pull away one duct, as you can see in the bottom center photograph. You can pull away one, two, or three ducts and branch them to different houses or different streets without adding a, a connector on. So it, it does away with having the likes of the clips that are shown in the, the far right picture. So this product's used uh, a lot in for various projects around the world. Okay, when it comes to overhead uh, fiber solutions, um, one, one cable that's generating uh, a lot of interest uh, in, in Europe at this side is this seven mil uh, ultra, lightweight, ultra lightweight cable, it's called a, a ULW cable. So 
that's a, a seven millimeter diameter cable that's got 48 fibers in it. Um, those 48 fibers um, can be accessed by mid span. So you can break out one fiber if you want to splice a, a pond splitter on a pole. Um, it's got a 68 meter span distance between poles. And if you're doing your drop to the home, you can actually have a, a span distance of up to 80 meters for a single span. So it's a very flexible cable. Um, there will be variants of this coming out that have got easy strip fibers inside to make it easier to, to access the fiber. Um, they can take a, a 97 kilometer an hour wind loading or in the, the circumstances that you get a large amount of snow and ice, um, you can it can withstand uh, five millimeters of ice hanging along the whole of the cable as well. It can be used under 11 kV power lines and if you want to have one that can work below 33 kV power lines, we can exchange the copper strength members inside to uh, a GRP strength member. So it's ideal for uh, for feeding fiber to rural areas. It's very small, it being seven millimeters. So it's extremely easy to install. And when you install it onto the poles, you only need to, to have a, a hand tight uh, tension between the poles, which makes it easier to install under no normal circumstances. Then we've got the, the Retriever product that I mentioned earlier. Again, that's extremely easy to install between the poles. Uh, we do have a, a 10 and a 12 millimeter version, which seems to be more popular for fiber to the home. And you, again, hand tight installation between the poles. You do the window cut with the tool, and you can retrieve the fiber and push the drop fiber down the drop tube to each home. Um, again, these have got 50 meter span distances, which is ideal for the, the rural areas for provisioning fiber to the home. We'll see. So the conclusion, um, I did mention it a few times during the, the presentation, is, uh, is dig once, um, one dig. Um, it, it must be more economical to install more network capacity uh, for future. And if you've got too much capacity, then there is the option of, of leasing that out to possibly other telecom operators. There's always uh, a revenue you, you can get from uh, from installing microduct or additional uh, capacity. Um, Pre-connectorized fiber is a, an easy way to to descale and uh, increase the quality of the network. Um, these connectors are all polished and tested at 13, 10, 15, 50, and, and 16, 25 nanometers. So um, they, they they are future proofed as well for uh, for new. Um, frequencies when they come out. Um, use products that are designed for their application. What we, we do see around the, the world is people get a product that's not specifically designed for the application. And because it's not specifically designed for that application, you can get issues in the future. If, you're, if you need a special product, you should speak to the manufacturers and, and see if they can design something specifically for you. It's always great to have people with new concepts and new ideas, um, but to make them make your concept or your idea um, work as best as possible, speak to the, the suppliers and the manufacturers so we can help you to come up with the best ideas. Then finally, um, plan your network to have easy access to small fiber counts. In the future, for all these future technologies, um, it will be a pair of fibers or four fibers, most likely, that will be needed for all these future networks uh, until we run out of fiber backhaul and then we have to install a whole new backhaul. Um, but yeah, that's it for me. And uh, thank you for your time. Okay. Great, thank you, uh, Colin, uh, for a nice presentation. Uh, we we uh, experienced uh, some some interesting facts and figures, plus uh, your product details uh, in your presentation. So thank you for that. So we will just now head to our uh, Q&A session. So I think I have got uh, a couple of questions in my box. So just just for just for the audience's attention. 
uh, please go to your uh, control panel and find the question section you can just type those uh, type those of your questions there and we will try our best to uh, discuss with uh, colin so let's let's uh, get to the q and a session now Okay, so uh, my first question I got uh, is uh, why is blown fiber so popular in the uh, world for the drop to the customer? So, Colin, if you'd like to answer the question, please. Why is it most popular? Um, blown fiber, um, I think I mentioned during the, the presentation that if you've got a, a duct with a fiber cable installed um, and you've only got access chambers every two kilometers, obviously it'll be much closer um, in in a, a city or a, a town uh, urban area but you still would need to dig from an access chamber to get to a house or if you've got four subducts um, you'll run out of capacity quite quickly or the ducts will start to um, get filled to the point where you can't install any more cables so blown fiber is, is just an easy way of installing um, access from splice enclosures between manholes to each um, to each home and it's upgradable and future proof as well. So I think it's just the, the ease of, of getting a dedicated um, pipeline to each home that somebody can come and easily install a fiber with very reduced or limited potential issues um, of, of doing the, the connect to the home. But when you do fiber to the home, um, you know, the, the telecom or operator will give uh, a, a day and a a time of when that fiber will come into your home and you want to to give a reliable uh, and um, easy fiber install to the house without having the um, potential customer having to sit in at home all day or uh, having to to take another day's holiday to come back because the fiber wouldn't go in properly so blown fiber is it's just it's reliability Thank you uh, for the answer. So uh, I think, yeah, uh, that answers the question. So uh, the next question would be from another uh, audience. I think I, I can add to that question as well, some, some part uh, that uh, we, we already know that uh, the blowing and trenching is uh, quite uh, popular and very mature technology uh, in this, this point of time so but uh, in in many of the even developed or developing nations we we even see uh, the laborers are pulling out cables that they are not using the best practice best technology to uh, and network so uh, what do you think are the main reasons for uh, not using the uh, mature technology uh, as of now in, in some part of the world and uh, what, what can be the solution in, in near near future to uh, actually uh, cover more networks with, with these latest uh, technologies? Well, I think from what I've, I've heard in the, in the, the Asia Pat region there, there's a lot of overhead cable that is, uh, is has been installed in many towns and cities and there are plans in place um, yeah. at some point to install those underground. So that is an ideal opportunity to, to put in a, a microduct system around uh, all the towns and cities, um, give access or, or make put pipes in, put some 40 mil pipes in for big cables, put some 14 mil pipes in for the smaller blown fiber cables and put some five and seven mil microducts in for all your drops to the homes, the shops, 
the 5G um, antennas. Um, that, that would be the ideal, ideal opportunity um, to put that in. Or if you're installing, uh, again, if you're opening a trench, uh, what some people do around the world is uh, if another utility is opening a, a trench to put a new gas line in, why don't you put some uh, micro ducts or, or ducts in? Um, so you've got that section installed, not for free, but for uh, obviously a, a good discount. Okay. Yeah. So uh, actually, uh, in my experience, I have seen uh, some some of the countries are uh, not actually using uh, the technology to deploy the network. So it's it's uh, though we are uh, trying to promote the technologies and uh, the best practices of the uh, technologies to deploy the network, but. Unfortunately, some some parts are not uh, following that, uh, and uh, I think actually all of the operators and uh, policymakers should come forward uh, to make uh, the network actually future proof. And uh, I, I liked your motto that, and it's it's uh, right now it's many of the organizations' motto as well. The big ones, I think, we should actually establish the motto as the country's uh, ideal uh, motto for uh, actually future proofing the infrastructure so that uh, everything actually uh, goes well and smooth so okay the next question uh, would be uh, pre-fiber seem also to be something that is gaining popularity uh, what's your insight on this, Colin? Please. In in some areas, the, the cost of of blowing fiber can be one one US dollar to one dollar fifty per meter, um, which, which is a high cost. So by pre-installing the fibers at the manufacturing stage. Um, if you've got 24 micro ducts there with 24 fibers in, um, you know that, that that's 24 dollars per meter um, that that you're going to get charged in the future for for blowing cables in. That that is quite a, a high cost. Now, obviously, there's a cost to to pre-install the fibers and and, uh, and retest them, etc. But you, it, it just makes the the whole install cost lower for the future. Um, you see that with the micro ducts, some, some of our tube bundles have got 12 or 24 micro ducts in them. You don't have to pre-install the fibers into all of them. Um, if you've got a 30% take up rate, then maybe when you're doing fiber to the home deployments, then maybe you add fiber in for 30 or 40% of the micro ducts. And that gives you your um, day one capacity for feeding all the clients that you think you're going to get. And you have empty micro ducts there it gives you the potential to connect future clients and for future networks. So, so yeah, pre-fibering pre just makes it that much easier. It descales it as well, so you don't have any um, blowing equipment. I know in in, in Sweden, um, after they finished doing their towns and cities, they they looked at using blown fiber and, and used blown fiber in very small towns and villages. And some of these areas are five, six, seven hours drive from, from the main city. And to have somebody drive up there with blowing equipment is not the most uh, practical um, way of doing things. So if you would used the, the pre-fibred, you could have actually trained somebody with a, a video and a conference call and sent them a few tools up in a, a small box. And they could have done most of the fiber installation to each house on their own. So it's just a simplification of, of um, pre-fibering, uh, but still having an upgradable network for the future. Yeah, great. So uh, I have got another question uh, from Shu Li. Uh, his question is how to avoid exceeding the fiber bending radius when install retractable cable system on the field. For the, the Retriever product, the pullback, we use G657A2. 
for the um, the multi fuel we use G657 A1 fibers. The the micro ducts that we use for the multi fuel, um, the way it's installed, if you have a look at the, the video on YouTube, you'll see that the the micro duct that is being used as a drop to the home is a, a larger, thicker micro duct. So the fiber is always well protected and always well within their, their bend radius uh, when you do the drop to the home. Then when the fibers come into the home, um, you strip it down to the 250 micron fibers and uh, it's just using standard uh, fiber um, termination boxes that are designed for that fiber type. The retriever box, um, the emu box that's used with the retriever, that has um, fiber management inside. Um, so when you drop the fiber off to go to the drop, then the fiber again is well within its um, bend radius. Okay, great. So I think uh, we are almost at the end of today's webinar. So I'd really like to thank uh, our today's speaker, Colin Kickpatrick from MTEL uh, for having his time to present uh, his presentation. And uh, to all the audience, again, uh, wishing you a very happy new year, 2021. And uh, thank you for your time. And uh, we will have our uh, next webinar in this month, end of this month. So we will uh, communicate uh, through our uh, uh, socials and e email. Uh, also, the webinar will be available. Uh, the recording will be available on our YouTube channel, uh, maybe in a couple of days. So thank you again to everyone for uh, having your time. So I will say goodbye today. So thank you, Colin. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.